Hi. Uh, my name's Rick, and I'm a substance abuse therapist. I want to start talking about what causes substance abuse. What is the origin of people's substance abuse? So when I first meet with people, uh, the first thing I do is start getting a history of the person. I can tell you that I have worked with the young, the elderly, the mentally ill, the sick. I've worked with a little bit of everybody when it comes to substance abuse and mental health. I can tell you 99% of them, their background involves trauma. Their background involves parents with substance abuse. A lot of them have other mental health issues. And some of them have maybe schizophrenia, a lot of bipolar dis disorder. Now, as far as just trauma, anxiety, and depression, I think that's a matter of not being able to manage their stresses, their flashbacks, their trauma. And I think therapy is important for that. What I think is most important is learning skills. And going forward, I'm going to have future videos where I talk about using skills. It's individuals that don't know how to feel their emotion. When they come into rehab, a lot of times they're crying because they're feeling emotions and they're stressed because they're trying to get rid of emotions. Maybe a lot of anger or irritability. Anger is a secondary emotion. So it's covering up something else. A lot of times it's hurt. It's a lot easier to feel anger than hurt. Hurt is internalized to me. Anger, I can deflect it out to you. So going forward, I'm going to add, uh, talk about tools to learn to feel your emotions, to get out of your head and into the present, and to change the way you think. I go by cognitive theory. So the way you think affects how you feel. So something happens, I walk out to my car, a bird poops on my car. That's called an activating event when something happens. Based on that event, I have a belief. Birds are always shitting on my damn car. That belief, if I have a belief like that, it obviously causes anger, frustration, irritability, some kind of emotion. And then because of that, the thought and the feeling, I stomp over to my door, open the door, get in, I start to drive off, I flip off people. I'm like, hey, you mother, where'd you learn how to drive? I uh, cut people off, I go home, I yell at my wife, I yell at my kids, all because I had that thought. And I think it's important to challenge those thoughts. Are birds always pooping on my car? No, not always. There's not an ever en never ending line of birds pooping on my car. Birds pooped on my car twice in the last three months. Okay, so birds sometimes poop on my car. That's a more manageable thought. I might feel still feel angry, but I'm not overwhelmed with anger based on the idea that birds sometimes poop on my car versus always poop on my car. You know, so, oh no, I'm such a loser. <laughs> That's a belief that would probably make me feel depressed. Let me examine the evidence for that. What's the proof that I'm a loser? Well, I've been in jail, I use drugs. Okay, what's the evidence I'm not a loser? Well, I graduated high school, I got my driver's license, I got a job, I was able to feed my kids, had to have a roof over their head. You know, 
So there's some evidence that I'm not a loser. So I'm going to reframe that thought. Even though I've done some things that I screwed up and I wish I would have done better, I've also accomplished some things too. And I can accomplish more. And I can do better. And I can be a better person. See how we reframe that and changed our perception? Now, if I can change my perception, I can make these emotions more manageable. And if my emotions more manageable, maybe I'm not less likely to run to substances, to deal with my trauma, to deal with my anxiety, to deal with my depression. And then I can use my coping skills, breathing, mindfulness, whatever, exercise, whatever coping skill it'll be easier to use because sometimes I use coping skills and they oh, they just aren't working. First of all, I need practice. But second of all, I think it's better if my emotions are more manageable. And when I have these exaggerated judgments, they exaggerate my emotions. Sometimes people just say, oh, well, I, I just like using. Either that's true or you don't want to admit to your trauma or you don't see your trauma. So, like, when I was in Afghanistan, I was I'm an Afghanistan vet, and I went through combat the first time. I went through my first firefight. I didn't think it really affected me. Because, hey, we go through firefights. It wasn't that bad. Uh, none of my guys died. I didn't get hurt. But, like, I heard a round is past my ear that affected me I minimized the trauma because oh it happens all the time to soldiers but like I heard and felt rounds flying past my head I could have died and I felt like lethargic afterwards like it took out a lot of energy afterwards it wasn't until years later I finally based my trauma years of drinking <laughs> and it took a while for me to process and change the way I think about my trauma and, and address it and, and now I'm more able to deal with day to day life Will my trauma be cured? I don't know, but I'm not dealing with it using substances anymore because I've learned the tools to deal with my anxieties and depression. Uh, change the way I think. I change my judgments. And I'm more able to be more present and aware and uh, address my emotions. Thank you for watching.